Right, let's understand risk. Let's imagine we're following a group of 50 people for a set period of time. And at the end of that time, we check to see how many of them have developed a disease of some description, right? A disease that we're interested in. And in this case, those people are represented in red. We could call it the disease of turning red, right? And in this case, 17 of them got sick. So 17 of the 50 got sick. What proportion got sick? Well, it's simply 17 divided by the 50. And of course, we know that that is equal to 0. 0.34, so 34% of them. So the risk of getting sick in this cohort was 0.34, or you could say that each of them had a 34% chance of getting sick, all things being equal. But of course, we know that not all things are equal. Not everybody's at the same risk. People, certain people have, have certain characteristics that might put them at more risk or might be exposed to something that puts them at more risk. So let's imagine in this particular example that the circles represent people who smoke right? And we think that they might be at increased risk of the disease that we're interested in. So let's calculate the risk in smokers and non-smokers separately to see if there is a difference between them. And if there is a difference, let's try and identify how much more at risk one group is relative to the other. So amongst the smokers, the circles, 12 people got sick, 13 people didn't get sick, so giving us a total of 25. And amongst the non-smokers, five people got sick, 20 didn't get sick, so again, we've got a total of 25. And of course, you can see that this is pretty much a cohort study. We start with an exposure of interest, in this case, smoking. We follow that cohort over time, and then we, we measure some sort of outcome, sometimes even more than one outcome, and we compare them to a group of people that weren't exposed, right? That's how a cohort study works. And then, hang on, this is beginning to look like one of those two by two tables that drive you mad because the day after learning about them, you can't quite remember what's a row and what's a column. And then you got to remember some formula like A of A plus B divided by C of C plus D. Who on earth is going to remember a formula like that? Nobody. Forget the formula. Just watch this. Watch how easy this is, right? Okay, watch what I do here. I simply say of the 25 smokers, 12 of them got sick. So the risk among smokers is 048 48%. And of the non-smokers, of the 25 non-smokers, five of them got sick. So the risk amongst non-smokers is 0.2, 20%, right? And if we want to know how much more at risk smokers are than non-smokers, we simply calculate the ratio. Voila, right? In this case, the risk ratio is 0.2. 48 divided by 0.2, giving us a relative risk of 2.4. In other words, smokers are 2.4 times more likely to get this disease than non-smokers. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's take a moment to better understand how to interpret a ratio like this. If there's no difference in the risk in the exposed group and the unexposed group, in other words, exposure doesn't make any difference, then the risk ratio will be 1. 1 means that there's nothing to see. If, however, the exposure of interest does increase the risk, then the risk ratio is going to be greater than 1. And in this case, it's 3. So the exposure increases the chance of the outcome by 3 times. You're 3 times more likely to get this particular outcome. And if the exposure of interest is protective in a, against the particular outcome, like, for example, the use of sunscreen to protect against skin cancer, then the risk ratio will be less than 1. In this case, it's a half, right? Have you got it? Of course you got it, what a question. Okay, let's keep going. So you can also look at the difference between these two groups, right? If you subtract the 0.2 from the 0.48, you get 0.28, right? This is the excess risk or the attributable risk. And let me explain to you what that means. Let's imagine that you are a non-smoker. Your risk of disease is 20% at that point in time, but then you take up smoking and your risk goes up to 48%. Can you see that the smoking didn't cause all of the risk? It didn't cause all of the 48%. There was already a background risk of 20%, right? The additional risk that came from smoking is what we call the excess risk, and that's the risk difference. So if you start with the risk of smoking and you take away the background risk, you're left with the risk that can be attributed to smoking. So that's why we call the risk difference or the excess risk the attributable risk, right? You got it? Boom shakalaka, this stuff is super easy. Let's take a look at a real example. Right, this is a cohort study that asked the question, does smoking in mothers, right, increase the risk of low birth weight in babies that are born subsequent to the pregnancy? Right, stop the video, stop the video, stop the video. We'll get back into that video in just one minute. I want to give a huge thank you to the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland for providing support for the creation of this video. 
Now, I'm delighted to be talking about the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland because I know them really well. I live in Ireland and I did my higher specialist training through the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. I do my continued professional development through the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. I'm also one of the trainers in the Faculty of Public Health Medicine, and I help develop and deliver a lot of the online and in-person teaching and training that the college does. So I really do have first-hand knowledge and experience of the tradition of excellence that is here at the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. So if you are a doctor in any discipline, or you're a healthcare professional anywhere in the world, and you want to improve your clinical or leadership skills, consider doing one of the courses or programs available either online or in person through the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. You can click on the link in the description below or go to rcpi.ie. Okay, let's get on with the video. In this study, followed up a thousand pregnant women and of the thousand, we had 158 who smoked during pregnancy and 842 who didn't smoke, who were non-smokers. So let's consider the risk in each of these two groups separately. In the group of non-smokers, 53 babies were low birth weight and 798 were of normal weight. And in the group of smokers, 19 babies were of low birth weight and 139 were normal weight, right? Now, to calculate the risk, we consider the number that had a particular outcome divided by everybody in that group, right? So the risk of low birth weight babies amongst non-smokers was 0.063, that's about 6%. And similarly, the risk of low birth weight babies amongst smokers was 0.12, about 12%. To calculate the relative risk, we take the risk in the exposed group and we divide it by the risk in the unexposed group. All right, so that's 0.12, 12%, divided by 0.063, 6%, and we get a relative risk of 1.9. Right, that's nearly two. In other words, smoking during pregnancy nearly doubles your risk of having a low birth weight baby. Now, let's take a quick look at the exact same numbers, but looking at it added in this two by two table. And again, easy peasy lemon squeezy, let's look at how we do this. First of all, we calculate the, the risk in each group separately. Then we look at the relative risk or the risk ratio. And again, we can of course see it calculates to 1.9, nearly two, nearly double the risk. And of course, we can also calculate the risk difference or the excess risk or the attributable risk by subtracting one from the other. And in this case, if you smoke during pregnancy, your absolute risk of low birth weight babies goes up by 5.7% or 0 0.0. 75 times by 100 to get it as a percent, 5.7 percent. Now, stay and watch another video. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Hit the bell to get notifications of future videos. And remember to like, comment, and share. And of course, you can check out learnmore365.com for a free public health course that's available for anybody. Lots of other research method courses available. Have a great day. Stay well. Speak to you soon. Cheers.